the idea of traveling at the speed of light is an attractive one for the sci-fi genre. The speed of light is an incredible 299,792,458 meters per second. At that speed, you could circle Earth more than seven times in one second, and humans would finally be able to explore outside our solar system. Albert Einstein's special theory of relativity famously dictates that no known object can travel faster than the speed of light in vacuum. This limitation makes it highly unlikely that humans will ever be able to send spacecraft to explore beyond our local area of the Milky Way. Until now, NASA is pushing all physics boundaries with a faster-than-light speed spacecraft design. The idea sounds like it is straight out of a sci-fi thriller, and that is because it is. The warp drive was first seen in Star Trek, allowing for superluminal spacecraft propulsion across the cosmos. According to Albert Einstein's special relativity theory, the problem of a material object exceeding the speed of light is that an infinite amount of kinetic energy would be required. But, this can theoretically be solved by warping space to move an object instead of increasing the kinetic energy of the object to do so. So, will it finally be possible for us to travel at light speed? Orbit. Beyond the blue. The Advanced Propulsion Physics Laboratory or Eagle Works Laboratories at NASA's Johnson Space Center is a small research group investigating a variety of theories regarding new forms of spacecraft propulsion. The lab's purpose is to explore, investigate, and pursue advanced and theoretical propulsion technologies that are intended to allow human exploration of the solar system in the next 50 years with the ultimate goal of interstellar travel by the turn of the century. The team is led by Dr. Harold Sonny White, who has been working on the fringe of propulsion science since the early 2000s, when he put together a paper that described an actual implementation of the Alcubierre warp drive. Could the idea possibly become a reality? Miguel Alcubierre is basically a guy who watched some episodes of Star Trek and decided to reverse Einstein's field equations so he could compress spacetime. Therefore, the ship itself is not traveling faster than the speed of light. The ship is not traveling through spacetime at all. It just kind of exists in a bubble, and in front it contracts the fabrics of spacetime and expands behind it, causing it to travel faster than light. The only problem was the original prediction said it would take a billion times the amount of energy in the universe to make it work. But over the years, scientists have whittled that down to a few times the energy of the Sun, and now they have it at about the mass of Jupiter. Dr. White proposes shaping the warp to try and reach Alpha Centauri in just a few weeks, for about the same price of a car. He took the idea to NASA and talked them into giving him a room at Johnson Space Center, and Eagle Works was born. The three main projects are now validating a test warp field generating thrust by tweaking quantum particles in a vacuum and testing several resonant cavity thrusters. Mr. Scott went on to reveal how there has been some success already with tests, but admitted more will be needed in the future. Dubbed the IXS Enterprise, Dr. White revealed his concept art in 2013 to give an idea of what the ship might look like, featuring the rings that would create the warp bubble. While many remain resolved in their belief that light speed travel would never be possible, Dr. White and his team are more than optimistic. Orbit. Beyond the blue. Gazing into the cosmos can often feel like you're witnessing the magical creations of a higher being. The shimmering nebulae, the swirling galaxies, the hungry and feeding black holes, look like things that appeared after someone spun a magic wand and cast a spell. But in the scheme of galactic magic tricks, 
One of the more difficult ones is making an entire star disappear. A giant one at that. And then, also making it reappear. It's like that time when David Copperfield made the Statue of Liberty disappear in 1986. Only in this instance, we do not know who or what made the giant star vanish off the radars. And just like the time Mr. Copperfield made Lady Liberty disappear, it doesn't mean that the star ceased to exist. It just means it was no longer visible to our eyes, or the eyes of our telescopes, rather. Something had eclipsed it for a period of six months before it reappeared. While astronomers have put forth theories of what could have happened here, it doesn't explain everything. And it's always a good sign when scientists are honest about observations that have puzzled them. Because it means the possibilities range from conventional to strange and mysterious. In this case, they range from simple space dust to what could be a dark elongated disk-like object of unknown origins. The possibilities are plenty, and astronomers haven't ruled out any. So the question remains, what made an old, giant star disappear for over half a year? Have astronomers found an alien megastructure star? That was the niggling thought in everyone's minds when the news first broke, and probably on your mind too. What we know for certain is that in the summer of 2012, this star's brightness plummeted, suggesting that something blocked almost all of its light streaming toward Earth. But what could that something be? Due to this bizarre incident, the giant disappearing star got added to the list of stars known as what is that or WIT stars. And because it was discovered as a part of the Vista variables in the Via Lactea VVV survey, it was named the VVV WIT08 star. It's a big star, and cooler than the Sun, which means it probably started out life very much like the Sun, but is now dying. This star is very big, almost 100 million kilometers wide. To put that into perspective, if you replaced our Sun with it, and this star were at the center of our solar system, there would be no Mercury. Mercury would be engulfed, and from Earth, this new Sun would appear much larger and redder than ours does in the daytime sky. Almost like the Moon does in the night sky. So what exactly happened to this big guy? In 2012, the VVV WIT08, stationed in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy, 25,000 light years away, suddenly dropped to just 3% of its original brightness over the course of a few months. Which means that something huge slowly eclipsed the star. Some stars do dim and brighten, but never by that huge amount. So this was some external object getting in the way. The astronomers who first observed the star assumed it was a dust cloud blocking its light. But the chances of that happening were way too low, and so they ruled it out. According to Eric Mamjek, an astrophysicist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, such a great degree of dimming suggests that a staggeringly large object, or even a group of objects, is blocking the light. It's got to be over a million kilometers wide, and very dense to be able to block that much starlight, he says. If the VVV WIT08 star reminds one of another unusual star that had shown similar bizarre dimming, you are not wrong. The infamous Tabby's star, which is also called the WTF star. And yes, the abbreviation stands for exactly what you would think. It's a star so weird that astronomers had to go a step further from plainly saying what is that. Tabby Star's dimming had sparked a surge of public debates about the evidence of an alien civilization building a megastructure that was soaking up the star's light. More conventional explanations included a swarm of comets or fragments from a shattered planet, both of which would create significant clouds of dust and debris that could also cover the star's light. But, so far, no simple single explanation ticks all the boxes for the dimming seen around a star. Scientists remain divided in their opinions about the true nature of the strange dimming of Tabby's star. And the same is the case with VVVWIT08. 
While we all covertly wish this may be the time we have finally found aliens and will be making the mass anticipated first contact, there is another explanation. If not aliens, then astronomers suggest that there's something orbiting the star itself that is blocking its light. And what they found is no less astonishing than the star itself. It must have a companion star orbiting it, and surrounding that star is a vast disk of opaque dust, at least as wide as the giant star itself for possibly much larger. A binary star system. If it does turn out to be a star with a giant dust disk, then it would be the first of its kind. White dwarf stars, aka the dead stars, are known to have dust clouds, but never one this massive. So, even this possibility would be a rare occurrence. Although, if these predictions turn out to be true, they could be the key to unlocking not only the mysteries behind VVVWIT08, but also those surrounding the Tabby star. When there's just one that stands out from the rest of its kind, it's considered an anomaly. But having two of the same weird type means there could be even more. So it's still weird and rare, but not necessarily one of a kind. Our known universe is full of stars. Do you know how many stars there are? Well, the number is so huge that you couldn't possibly put it into perspective. Too many zeros. When you look at that many stars, most will be well behaved and understood. Young ones, middle-aged ones like the sun, dead or dying ones, and so on. But with such a huge number, some are going to act weird. What we need to remember is that astronomy is all about looking at a dot in the sky, one of billions of trillions, and over time seeing it change. And from that meager data we get dying stars, binary stars, and stars encircled by strange, huge dark disks, and sometimes all of those at once. I'd say that even if we don't have all the answers about this star yet, it's quite the result from such a small effort. But then again, what do I know? Orbit. Beyond the Blue.